Hi guys, yes. he is Cezirin. He is Sanjelo. And today we are going to do Models, Models of Elasticity. <laughs> so, there are three main objectives in this experiment. The first one is to determine the characteristic curve of this dial gauge. The second is to determine the bending of a flat bus as a function of force, thickness, width, and distance between two support points at a constant force. And finally, to determine the models of elasticity of steel, aluminium, and where is it? Hmm, oh, oh, brass. Brass. So, are you guys ready? Let's start. Let's start. So, let us begin the experiment with the first objective, and that is to determine the characteristic curve of a dial gauge. But, first, how do we take readings from this dial gauge? Want to know how? Follow me. So, this is the dial gauge. It consists of two arrows. The smaller one indicates whole number, while the larger one indicates two decimal places. Together, they give a value in, in the unit of millimeters. Before we take any reading, we must make sure the, the reading is free from zero error. So, to calibrate it, just turn the dial until the larger arrow points at zero mark. Just like this. Okay? So now, it is ready to take any reading. That's it. Hi guys, now that you learned how to use a dial gauge, let's look at the appendix for objective number one. So this is the appendix for objective number one. As you can see, this table have two columns. The first column is the force, which is also the manipulated variables. The second column is the extension, which is also the responding variable. So let's start our experiment. All right, because we we want the weight to be manipulated variable. We'll use slotted weight, this one. So for this one, it has a mass of 10 gram or weight of 0 0.1 Newton. Okay. If we want to change the weight, we will add more mass. So like this one, it has the mass of 50 grams and this one has a weight of 10 grams. So the first row shows that we, we would like to take the reading without force. So without hanging anything, just take the reading and it shows zero extension. Okay. So if we want to hang something, just slowly put it, hang it, release it, don't drop it. Okay. Just gently release it and Look, it still shows zero extension. Then, what happens if, let's say, I were to add 80 grams. Okay. So again, just slowly hang it, gently releasing it, and the dial starts to move in clockwise direction. Take note of that. Okay. Just wait until the dial stops, and ah, it stops right there. Okay. All right. So for the second objective, we'll determine the bending of flat bars as a function of first force, second the width of flat bars, third the thickness of flat bars, and finally the distance between two support points. We shall look at the experimental setup. Hi guys, so this is the experimental setup for objective number 2, 1. So let us get to know the apparatus. So first, we have the dial gauge, which is used to measure the bending of the flat bars. Secondly, we have the dial gauge holder, which is used to hold the dial gauge together. Thirdly, we have the knife edges, which is used to hang the slotted weight. And finally, we have two support points at each end. So that's it guys, let's begin with the experiment. Of course, you will need to tabulate the result. So let's look at the appendix. Okay. 
So for the second objective, the, the first part, we will need to determine the bending of flat bars as a function of the force. The ma manipulated variable here is the mass of the slotted weight or the force applied on the bar. The responding variable here is the extension. Okay, so just like the objective one, we will manipulate the force by changing, by adding the slotted weight. Then the extension can be read from the dial gauge. You must take note that the distance between two support points, the width and the thickness of the flat bar is constant for the first part. Okay, we shall proceed with the experiment. Hi guys, now I will show you how to determine the bending of flat bars as a function of the force. So to do this, simply hang the slotted weight onto the knife edges slowly and carefully. Make sure there are no impact. So, if you notice, once we put the slotted weight on the knife edges, the dial gauge starts to turn. Make sure you notice the direction of the turn. If it's anti-clockwise, then you need to read the red marking. So, to manipulate the force, simply add more load to the slotted weight. So, as can be observed, the greater the load of the slotted weight, the greater the bending of the flat bars. So that's it. Okay. As for the second objective, the manipulated variable here is thickness of steel bar, while the responding variable is same as before, extension. So in this case, we will put the other variables such as force, width, and length between two support points as constant. Let's check it out. Hi guys, so for the second part of the second objective, we will determine the bending of flat bars as a function of thickness. And for this experiment, we will be using three types of flat bars. First, we have the thinnest flat bars. And then next, we have the medium flat bars. And finally, the thickest flat bars. To determine the relationship between the bending and the thickness, we simply replace the flat bars starting from the thinnest, medium, and thickest. But make sure you kept the mass constant and also the length of the flat bars. For the third part of second objective, we will manipulate the width of steel bars. For this case, we will take the force the thickness and distance between two support points constant. We will take the extension of the bending bars as responding variable. Let's, let's look. Hi guys, now I will be showing you how to achieve the third part of the second objective and that is to determine the bending of flat bars as a function of width. So, for this third part of the second objective, it is very similar to the second part. But instead of using flat bars with different thickness, for this experiment, we will be using flat bars with different width, as we can see here. So, begin your experiment by using, firstly, the smallest width, and then secondly, the medium width, and finally, the widest width. And make sure your weight is also the same for each of the flat bars. So, that's it. For the last part of second objective, the distance between support points is taken as manipulated variable, while the force, the width, and thickness are constant in this case. The extension is taken as responding variable. To change the distance between support points, we will do this. Hi guys, to change the distance between two support points, Simply loosen up the right angle clamp and slowly slide the two support point closer to the L gauge. Then tighten the right angle clamp. But make sure you measure the distance between these two support points using a measuring tap. And that's it.
Hi guys, now we will proceed with the last objective of this experiment and that is to determine the modulus elasticity of steel, aluminium and brass. So without further ado, let us view at the appendix. So this is the appendix for the third objective. As we can see here, we have four columns. The first column is the type of material we will be using, which is steel, aluminium and brass. So for this experiment, you need to first determine the dimension of each of the flat bars by measuring L, which is the distance between two support points, A, which is the width, and B, the thickness. And once you measure the dimension, you also need to measure the mass of the slotted weight on each of the flat bars. And finally, you need to determine the extension based on the reading of the dial gauge. So that's it. And then, we will determine the modulus of elasticity using this equation. Lambda equals to 1 over 4 L over B cubed times 1 over A times Fy over E. In this equation, we will find E and we have measured the, thick, uh, the bending, the distance between two support points, thickness, width, and mass or force. Thus, we will calculate the experimental value for models of elasticity. Okay. The, the experimental value can be compared with the theoretical value as shown here. So, this is how you calculate the models of elasticity. Hi guys, and that's all for models of elasticity. elasticity.